Welcome back. It is Thursday, August 16th, 2018. Time for your tropical update. I have a few systems to talk about. Three, actually. Two of which don't seem to be big players in the overall scheme of things. One, however, is going to be one to watch, and that is going to be in the Pacific Tropical Storm Lane, which will likely become major hurricane lane in the next couple of days. We have subtropical storm Ernesto in the North Atlantic and Invest 99L, a cluster, a tropical wave off the coast of South America. Let's start off here in the northern parts of the Atlantic with subtropical storm Ernesto. Not a big deal at all. In the middle of the Atlantic, a fish storm not affecting any land masses at all, and it is heading towards colder water and eventually meaning its demise in the North Atlantic as it heads towards the United Kingdom as a remnant low and bringing them some uh, much needed rain. So what exactly is a subtropical storm? Well, it's part tropical and part non tropical. Major difference is wind field. It's more spread out, usually has a clear center cloudless and also the heaviest rain is usually on the far north and east of the center. Usually, you know, with the tropical system, it's completely surrounding the closed off low, a little bit different with a subtropical storm. So the bigger picture, once again, the entire basin pretty quiet, although there is a little more activity certainly than where we were uh, just a few weeks ago. There's a close up look on satellite imagery of Ernesto subtropical storm and certainly see that pivot in the atmosphere there. And as we switch up and show you water vapor imagery, it's almost completely encircled by some dry air and some of the air being pulled in is composed of the ash and smoke from Canadian and California wildfires. So it's making it all the way across into the central parts of the Atlantic into Ernesto. So very interesting there. Sometimes the smoke particles can actually add as, uh, act as cloud condensation nuclei and help more showers and storms develop. So we'll see what actually happens within that over the next couple of days. Any anything that happens with it isn't going to be a big deal, though. It's really kind of just falling apart. All right, here's sea surface temperatures in kind of a unique spot, especially for this time of the year. Sea surface temperatures extremely warm. In fact, they're running about two to four degrees Fahrenheit above average in this particular area. But as we put a line on it here, it's heading towards cooler waters. Once it pretty much crosses this line, it'll be too cold to kind of sustain itself and it'll really start to degenerate and kind of fall apart and just maintain itself as a general mid level cyclone. So mid latitude cyclone. So not a big deal at all. All right, let's go down to to the south and the tropical parts of the Atlantic and the far western fringes of the main development region. This is a generally much better area, especially with the setup this year for development. We're looking at conditions that are a little bit better to help it develop into something if it were. So this is 99 L. You can see it a 36 hour loop. I put that on there to kind of show you the general overall evolution of this. It had some pretty good convection with it. Thunderstorm activity that flared up last night, got everybody excited about it. And then this morning things quieted down a bit. But if you notice, we'll let it run one more time. You can see the last few frames. There is another flare up of some convection starting to develop here as it starts to push off towards the west in an area that has a little bit warmer ocean temperatures right now. Not in a bad spot. Ocean temperatures are above that 80 degree temperature that we do need, and it's only heading into warmer waters as it presses towards the west eventually into the Caribbean. We also have some vorticity signatures with it, and this is some spin in the atmosphere here. It's a little bit too elongated. I'd like to see it more compact and centralized and circular. Not really seeing that just yet again. It's in the very very, very early stages of trying to get its act together. Working against this system from developing is going to be wind shear. Not so much currently, but as it moves out into the uh, parts of the Caribbean, it's going to encounter some pretty intense wind shear south of Cuba and uh, the Dominican Republic and Haiti. So that could possibly tear it apart if it does develop by that point. So it has a rather small window to develop. So 10% within the next 48 hours or so. And by the way, the next name on the list is Florence. If it doesn't do it in the next 48 hours, possibly has a little bit better chance within the next five days, about a 20% chance at that point. Notice the general direction it will be heading off to the west. How do the models see things? Well, this isn't a closed off low yet, so a lot of the operational models having a tough time even picking it up and, you know, prognosing where it's going to head. But those that do generalize track off to the west northwest within the next seven days or so. So let's head to the Pacific now and talk about what's going on there. Very active. We're on our 12th named storm and that is Tropical Storm Lane a little bit ahead of schedule by nearly a month. Usually you find the 12th named storm in the Pacific Basin around September 19th or so. So climatologically speaking, very, very active out there. Here's how it looks on satellite imagery. A very well defined tropical storm right now. It's got winds around 60 miles per hour. So sustained. So it's a little bit higher end tropical storm. You need winds of those 74 miles per hour or greater to be classified as a hurricane. Let's put the track on it as it tracks off towards the west and strengthens in a very warm ocean waters mimicking in both strength and track Hector. 
just about 10 days ago made a very similar track across the Pacific Ocean, eventually heading towards the big island of Hawaii. Let's see what the models do with this particular system. We'll use the global scale uh, models here, the GFS, the American and the Euro, the European. And you see the European is in the red, the GFS is in the yellow. Both diagnosed in the storm currently, same general location. Pretty good consistency here as we head on into the upcoming weekend. And then as we get towards the late weekend, early next week, they start to deviate some. GFS a little bit farther to the north, European a little bit farther to the south. Better scenario for Hawaii if it does take the uh, European track there. And getting a little bit closer to Hawaii, GFS has a really Close call there as we get towards the middle to end of next week. European much farther off to the south, sparing the Big Island. So again, not real consistency. It's still way far out in the future, but certainly going to be one to watch in the next seven days or so. Hey, I'm on social media. You have a question? Want to follow me on Facebook, meteorologist Tim Pandages, or also on Twitter, 13 Tim Pandages. We'll have another update for you tomorrow if things change. Have a good afternoon.